And honey, you won't be able to pass out any literature there. Okay. Okay. What? Aiden, get down here. Get down here. Give those to mom and hold a sign down here. There you go. How you doing, sir? You one of these? Yeah, I just I drove by. I couldn't read the signs fast enough. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're not pro-lifers. We're abolitionists. We don't believe you should regulate when, where, and how you murder babies. Mm -hmm. This church has a representative that actually stopped, helped table a bill that would make abortion illegal in Texas because he's pro-life. He doesn't believe that women should be actually punished or cr it should be criminalized to make abortion illegal. So, and the pastor here also resides and does the prayer meetings for the representatives. And he totally supports this representative's uh, beliefs which are, you know, basically it's unbiblical. Nobody should ever be able to murder anybody. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're just, and we do this at all, a lot of churches, a lot of pro-life churches, and we call them to repent of being pro-life. We ask them, what is Christianity supposed to look like in a culture where child sacrifice is legal? And we believe that, it's a, that we should actually make it illegal. We should oppose it. We should make just laws. The Bible says, woe to you who make unjust laws. We're Christians and uh, we're calling other Christians to repent of their apathy. You know, in Texas, there's 60,000 abortions every single year in Texas and, and legal, right? Like this, like this is totally legal every single year. And there's over 30,000 evangelical Christian Bible-believing churches in Texas, right? 30, 000, over 70,000 pastors. And right now there's 13,000 kids in foster care waiting to be adopted in Texas. Texas has a very high foster care rate. Um, so 13,000 are actually just waiting to be adopted, but nobody wants them. You know why? Because they're not babies. So we got kids like these right here, Aiden, Chloe, Cindy, and Joe. And there's two more down there that we've adopted out of foster care because foster care is actually evil and wicked. How they treat the kids, how the kids live, how, uh, they give them to gay and lesbian homes. Gay and lesbians are the ones right now that are adopting these kids. Um, and so if just the pastors acted Christian, only like one out of four churches would need to have a pastor um, adopt the kids, one out of four. And there would be no, no orphans sitting there rotting away. So that's why we're, that's why we're here. And, and this church knows you know, they know abortion's legal and they know they're not opposing it, even though they'll speak with their lips that abortion is wrong, but their hearts are far from God because they don't do actually what the Bible says to do. Yeah. You live here in town? Little Elm. Little Elm? Yeah. Okay. So, how about you? Yeah, I live here in town. Yeah. So, again, we're like abolitionists of slavery, follow biblical precepts, mm -hmm. we're Christians. You don't sin, you don't do evil so good may come. You don't write a bill that says, well, after the baby has a heartbeat, you don't kill it. That's Christians doing that, right? That's pro-lifers. Like, you shouldn't kill it no matter what, ever. And to, for a man to sit in a church every Sunday and come up with a bill that says, well, when it feels pain, then we shouldn't kill it. Let's do that. That's just wicked, right? We should say, hey, it's God that creates children in the womb. He knits them together wonderfully. He does it for his pleasure. That God is a creator of life. Who are we to make laws saying when you can and when you can't kill babies? You know, like if, if you were an alien and you looked down and looked at who wrote all of these pro-life bills, you would think, wow, those are evil, wicked people, you know? Because it's the Christians, the ones making all these laws, because they think if they, if they stop crime or stop murder incrementally, then that's good. Well, it's not good. Like if you were cheating on your wife, all right, you wouldn't go, okay, look, I'm going to only cheat on her like three days a week, not five. You wouldn't be, being less evil isn't good. <laughs> it's still being evil, right? 
So we're just saying, let's just follow God and do what God says. You know, let's act like it's murder, that it's sin. Let's call the legislators to repent, which we did. We went down to the state legislators, um, to the Republican uh, convention, and literally like prophets said, look man, you need to repent of your apathy of abortion. Stop regulating it. You know what they made the number one uh, plank of the Republican Texas party? Of course, because your church wouldn't tell everybody. They wouldn't tell everybody to support it, you know? Because it's wicked, man. The pastor and these representatives are wicked. Or else they would say, look, here's what the number one plank is to make abortion illegal in Texas. Six, six or seven guys went down there and did that. You know, we didn't wear like big robes or nothing. We just went down and said, hey, look, you need to repent. And there's the actual, she has one of the, uh, the flyers that we handed out down there showing what we need to do as Texans, you know, to make abortion illegal, right? But the churches and the pastors, because they don't want to, they don't, they know that one third of the women in your congregation has had abortions. They know that, right? So they don't want to make it an issue. They really don't. I mean, they may preach against it, you know, but that's as far as it goes. When a bill actually comes up to make it illegal, they hide from it. They hide the bill. They actually tabled the bill so it couldn't be voted on. Ten representatives actually signed it and tried to and fought to, uh, to uh, get, a, get it voted on, right? Because if we have enough pro-life bills to make evil pro-life bills, we, we could, those same people could vote and make it illegal. Why don't we do it? You know? So I know I sound like a harsh, crazy guy, but they're actually killing 60,000 babies every single year here in Texas and nobody cares, man. I mean, they just don't, they just don't care. And you can't go to evil people and say, hey, come on, you guys, let's make abortion illegal. But you should be able to go to people that like claim to follow God, right? And say, black people shouldn't be slaves. You shouldn't be able to rape black people. You shouldn't be able to kill them, right? You shouldn't be able to make servants out of them, right? And that's what the abolitionists did in Texas. And the, and the, the churches fell silent on the issue because they didn't, they don't, it's too controversial, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a, so, but, you know, what we're calling for is revival. You know, people to repent, love God, put him first, stuff like that. Do I sound like a crazy guy? <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Partly. I mean, it's just, it sounds like you don't know these guys. No, I do. My, my mom goes to this church. Yeah. Uh, we know the, the representative, we know the pastor, he, he prays over the senator's meetings, you know, the, the prayer breakfasts with them. So, I mean, I know they seem like good 501c3 Christians, you know what a 501c3 is? It's a, it's a corporation, it's a non-profit corporation where you get a license from the government to operate. That's what this is, man. It's a 501c3. So they have to abide by certain rules. You know what those rules are? One of them is they can't be political, they can't tell you how to vote. Which. If they're going to vote on whether or not abortion should be legal or not illegal, a pastor should be able to stand up and say, no, we have to make it illegal. Like if they were killing pastors, he would stand up. You know, when they made that bill, um, they put that forth that, um, that bill that all pastors had to put together in Austin um, and submit their sermons to make sure there's no homophobia in it. Right. What all the pastors do? They all bonded together, right? They all made a stand, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's about them. So... Who's the voice for this kid, man? This is totally legal. Who's who's speaking out for them? You know, whatever we don't do for the least of these, we don't do for Christ. God says this, Amos 5, okay, in Amos, it says, Though your prayers be many, I will not hear them. Your festivals, your meetings, I hate them. I will not hear your prayers. You know, your, your praise, your songs, your instruments are a stench to my nostrils. You know who he was talking to and why? He was talking to the people who followed God that allowed child sacrifice in the land and didn't do anything about it. And you know what? We're like a thousand times worse than those people here in Texas. And we have porn barns. We got whore houses that everybody knows about, all the cops know about, and they're totally legal. I mean, you can go to them. They got bars, doors, on, bars on the windows, you know? Cops all know about it. It's all, it's all good, man. Number one cause of death in Texas? Child sacrifice. It's just we don't have a Moloch sitting here, you know, where people lay their babies on top of, you know, and burn them in in fire. So, I mean, we have this, like, beautiful Christianity in Texas. Bible Belt. Even the drug dealers and pimps go to church in Texas, right? It's not a biblical Christianity. 
I mean, if we don't care about the least, we don't care about God. I mean, we don't, you know? So, you know, and we're not here because we hate you. Like, I don't hate you. I'm pleading with you, you know, like to, to, to examine ourselves rightly, right? And, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of churchians will say, you're judging us. And I'll say, look, look at the fruit of the land. You know, how can we have 30,000 good biblical Bible teaching churches and child sacrifice goes unopposed? You know how many pastors actually showed up to the Austin rally to uh, make abortion illegal? I mean, there was about a thousand people that showed up and there's like four pastors. And all of them knew about it. All of them were contacted. All of them were sent the literature. I mean, my mom and dad, her mom and dad, I, go to this church, you know? And it, it, it's total weak sauce because they're like, well, well, what do we do? It's like, well, why don't you go to your pastor and say, hey, we should actually make abortion illegal. Not just give a sermon, you know? I mean, it's kind of, this is what pastors do, okay, in Texas. They're at Denny's, right? Pastor's meeting. And they look across the street and there's a woman getting raped. Okay, here's what they do. They all look at it and go, I think God's telling us we need to have more like women's ministries, like recovery groups and stuff like that. I think that's probably, I think there's gonna be a need for that. You know, the way our society is. Why do all pastors think that we're moving away from God as a nation? Don't we have enough Christians, enough pastors that we should be moving towards them? Why don't we? Why has the church lost its power? It's salt, it's light. We're more than conquerors, man. Like, we have God on our side. We have the Holy Spirit with us. The, the apostles didn't have that for a long time, right? So, we don't have to, like, just let the world crush us, let sin abound. We don't have to do that. We could actually, like, have great joy, like, be lifted up by God, have power and strength and love, you know? I'm a Homer Simpson, okay? Like, truly, like, if you knew me, you'd be like, you and Homer Simpson are just like, but I'm saved, all right? Homer wouldn't adopt six kids out of foster care. I, I don't even, I don't want a big family, you know? But God has changed my life so much by loving these kids, and they love me. When they say they love God, it's a lie. They actually hate God. And the reason they hate God is because they don't do what he says. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, do my commands. Feed my people. You know, those that love me, do what I say. We don't do what he says. I mean, if, if we just got, took care of all the orphans, you know, we could do it like that. Like, no problem. I mean, the houses around here, they're like mini mansion tracks. You know, but these kids, man, Chloe, right there, she was in nine foster homes and two RTCs, which are residential treatment facilities, because nobody could handle her. Nobody loved her. No one was willing to pay the price, which is high with her, because she's, you know, she's like blown out, right? But, like, she loves me, and I love her and my wife, you know, I mean, we've grown a lot. So, anyway, I... Appreciate you. you go to church here in town? We, we home church. We homeschool too. Yeah. yeah. So. What are you thinking? It's kind of like I do mission work in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same way I feel about how we're not helping poor people worldwide. Yeah. You know, we've got a bunch of stuff that we don't need and we don't share it. And if we try to preach the gospel, it can be unconvincing. Yeah. Because it's like, well, We're supposed to give up our lives and we don't even give up our love. Nah. There's a problem. Yeah. So. Yeah, you could always say, like, this is like normal, like the church will always say, you could tell how you love God based on your checkbook, how you spend your money, what's important to you, who's your God? Well, you, you use that same argument against like people like this, against the church. Okay, like, well, do you spend more money trying to make abortion illegal or do you spend more money cutting the grass? And you know what the pastors actually would say to me sometimes? Well, we have a lot of grass. It's like, <laughs> we're talking about kids here, you know? Like, your grass is more important than trying to, like, save these kids. All right, all right, let's just say that you think abortion's a political issue, which it's not, all right? What about the orphans? Can't we adopt them? 
Like, how do we ignore them? You know? So, I agree. It's just we live in a town where child sacrifice is legal. Always in the Bible. That's always bad for the people. The good people and the bad people. <laughs> you know? So. But. And they'll, they, they've already told us to come right out and say, hey, we're not allowed on their property. You know? Like, they'll call the cops on us. You know? So. Which they haven't done yet, but I'm sure it'll happen. Especially when I get on the bullhorn. Because, you know. But, uh. And then can you can I get a hold of you through any of these websites? Yeah, you sure can. If you just ask, hey honey, can you have one of those too? And uh, hey Chloe, can I have one of the um? Where's the um? There you go. But part of what we do is this is called agitation, you know. So it like makes them think right um they do get upset at us at night they lay in bed and they go oh those guys how long are they going to be out in front of our church you know and it makes them think about it right so what will happen is more people will adopt kids because of this and more people will start saying yeah it is murder instead of like yeah it's a bad choice you know and they need to quit saying they're pro-life and become abolitionist you know and maybe some people will put some pressure on the representative you know, because we will put that bill forward. It's, you know what? It's the first bill in Texas ever to make abortion illegal in like 43 years. Mm -hmm. Why is that? <laughs> and you know, many states, and, and I'll tell you why, because they say, oh, well, because they don't care actually. But they'll say, oh, well, it's the federal government, you know? But look at all the states over marijuana that are defying the federal government. Because it's, it's illegal to, to uh, buy and sell and use marijuana by the feds. But all these states now are all you know texas will end up doing it too watch you know they'll say oh we're going to oppose the federal government over marijuana but kids being murdered no problem you know so anyway thanks man i appreciate it i really do man thank you <laughs> god bless you hey give me a hug man <laughs> <laughs> You know, you should probably hold a sign with us for a minute. Like, this is a, you know what? This is like the first things John the Baptist said and Jesus said, you know, he calls us to repent, right? It's one of the greatest gifts God's ever given us is the 